Hi, this is Ian from EcoSub Robotics. It's well known that EcoSub have pioneered some really smart, affordable AUV systems over the last decade, but it is a little lesser known that EcoSub AUVs have always been designed to be deep water rated. Deep ocean access is in our DNA, and more specifically, in our mechanical design. Madeira is in the mid-Atlantic with super easy access to deep water. We were kindly hosted by the Oceanic Observatory of Madeira. Ruby Caldera and the team were absolutely amazing, generously providing workshop and vessel support. We brought a selection of vehicles with us. The main event was our EcoSub M25 Science AUV. The platform's rated for missions down to 2,500 metres, however we were carrying a CTD and Trilux sensor from Chelsea Technologies, which allows us to measure chlorophyll and turbidity with the Trilux rated to 2,000 metres. Our main objective was to take the M25 on a science mission down to 2,000 metres using our spiral dive behaviour for vertical profiling. First, we ran a series of shorter missions at depths between 30 to 500 metres. Then we headed out to about 2,300 metres water depth and launched the M25 into the water and at 16.21 on the 30th of July hit the start button and sent her to the depths. It's worth taking a minute to stop and think about what we're doing and to do that some context is required to consider what our scientists can use to collect data from 2,000 metres. For most it involves a research vessel with a CTD on a winch. This is expensive and involves a decent sized vessel and crew. Most AUVs can't do this. They're limited to depths of around 300 metres. The deep rated AUVs available are large and expensive, needing either a crane or a launch and recovery system with a big vessel to operate and cost upwards of $4 million. Ocean gliders are mostly limited by depth rating and have budgets in the hundreds of thousands. The costs and complexity of collecting ocean data is a real barrier for the scientific community. So we hope our EcoSub M25 platform, in this case costing around £50,000, can provide a new level of accessibility to AUV technology and ocean data collection. After that, we sat and waited. Until a very welcome point on the map arrived, indicating the vehicle was on the surface and had just sent an Iridium message with its position. We have our Iridium messages timed to send every five minutes whilst the vehicle is on the surface, so as we steamed over to its location we were able to pick up any updates, in this case using our phone to follow them. With some relief we brought the M25 back on board and headed straight back to shore. The mission had taken about an hour and a half to complete. You got it? Yeah. Cool. Back on shore, we downloaded the data and boom, we had a perfect run, hitting a depth of 2,002 metres before heading back up to the surface under power. Next up was to run some tests with a couple of our development systems. These vehicles are configured as EcoSub M10 Power Plus AUVs, each with a 1,000 metre depth rating. They're both carrying a Nortec DVL, which is normally only rated to 300 meters, but Nortec have let us borrow one of their newest 1,000 meter rated Nucleus DVL systems. We're keen to get this vehicle deep as well. 
As you might have noticed, we are close into shore here, but the vehicles still have around 80 meters of water depth. This vehicle is carrying an advanced navigation Certus Evo INS system. We are running tests to assess the output of the INS alongside the vehicle's own navigation system. One of the key features of our Power Plus vehicles is the retractable bow plates, small active wings that glide out of the nose cone when a mission has started to ensure they don't get damaged during launch and recovery. They provide a secondary pitch control system in addition to the vehicle's main internal moving mass. As we are only operating in shallow water, when the vehicle finishes its mission, it switches the prop off and the vehicle floats to the surface under its own positive buoyancy. The last mission for Vehicle 185 was to dive to a thousand meters depth, complete a survey, then return to the surface under power. So we headed off to deeper water again. Every time we deploy a vehicle, we fully understand the risks. The ocean is one of the harshest environments to operate any robot in, particularly the deep ocean. And on this occasion, we didn't see 185 again. The vehicles have a series of fail-safes on board. Notably, a nanny lives in the software, monitoring all systems and will abort a mission when any threshold is breached. This vehicle also carried a drop weight system. After a maximum of 24 hours, depending on water temperature, the drop weight will release, assisting the vehicle to the surface. In the event that it has lost some of its positive buoyancy in the deeper, less dense water. The system also has acoustic comms and an independent pinger. In the absence of the data from the vehicle, we suspect that the vehicle slightly overshot its depth demand of 1000 meters and the nanny triggered an abort. In this case, we would expect it to return to the surface in a few hours, or worst case, 24 hours once the drop weight had released. However, as the vehicle didn't reappear, it's likely that we had underestimated our weight change due to water density, and the vehicle was slightly negatively buoyant when the mission aborted, allowing the vehicle to sink to a depth we know will lead to catastrophic system failure under pressure, before the drop weight had fired. This is experience you can't get in a lab or playing in shallow water and provides inspiration and ideas to make the systems more robust and effective. We've learned an active drop weight solution linked to the nanny abort would have avoided this, allowing the vehicle to immediately become more buoyant and also to manage a gap between the nanny depth threshold and the mission depth demand. Although we don't ever want to lose a system, we walked away with a whole lot of positives and opportunities to make further improvements that we would have missed if everything had gone okay. Our week spent in Funchal with the Oceanic Observatory of Madeira has been one of the highlights of the EcoSub journey, with some amazing achievements and milestones ticked off. We nailed a world AUV first, industry leading 2000 meter depth deployment for a micro AUV system, proving real world technology to aid ocean science data collection. We would like to extend our sincerest thanks to Rui and his team at the observatory for the hours at sea, use of their facilities and the opportunity to showcase our deep rated systems. Obrigado. If you would like any more information about EcoSub AUV technology, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, find us at the website www.ecosub.uk. Thank you.